Let's look at how we can customize Swagger in your Spring Boot application to get more tailor-made and more specific information in your auto-generated HTML documentation. Swagger is a pretty cool way to document your Spring Boot REST APIs. All you need to do is add the Swagger dependencies and it automatically serves up an API documentation endpoint for you in HTML and JSON. The HTML documentation allows you to interact with it and actually make API calls, so that's super cool. This is in fact what we did in the previous tutorial, so if you haven't checked that out, click on the card that's showing up here. That's great, but there were a couple of small problems with the generated documentation. First problem, there were some out-of-the-box Spring MVC related stuff that Swagger was documenting. Because Swagger doesn't know, it just sees APIs and it documents them. This includes both your application APIs that you wrote and the Spring Boot slash MVC APIs that just come along for the ride because of the fact that you're using the framework. Your models are included with the Spring MVC models. You'd like Swagger to exclude all the framework stuff and include just the ones that you've written. Why you ask? What's the harm in having those APIs there? Well, for starters, it causes a lot of confusion. It adds a lot of noise to the documentation. Secondly, if you add something in the API documentation, someone who's reading the documentation is very likely to actually use them. Now, if you later replace those framework APIs or change them somehow, you break all their code that uses it, and they're gonna blame you because you added those APIs in the documentation in the first place. So here is the first problem. You need control over what classes and packages and APIs that Swagger considers for documenting. Now here's the second problem, slightly less impactful, but important anyway. You notice this nice heading and description of this API documentation page? API documentation, who doesn't want a nice title like that? Well, you don't. You wanna replace that stuff with your actual application name and description, with your name, your URL, your terms of service, your license and all that stuff, right? So this is the second problem. We'll solve both of these problems by configuring Swagger to give it more information about the project so that it knows what to put in those metadata sections. So the way to customize Swagger is by creating an instance of an object called a docket, all right? A docket is an object that's gonna contain all the customizable properties that you intend for Swagger to pick up when it's generating those documentations. And the way you publish your intent is by making that as a spring bean, all right? So in your project, as long as you have a spring bean, which is of type docket, and it has all the properties set, Swagger is gonna be looking at that instance to figure out what it needs to do, to figure out what's the behavior that it needs to achieve. So all you have to do to customize Swagger is to create that spring bean of type docket, and then set the properties on it, set all the things that you want Swagger to do, and it's just gonna take it. So what I'm gonna do here is create a method which returns the docket and annotate it with the add bean annotation, and that makes it a spring bean. And in this method, I need to create an instance of docket and return it, and spring is gonna hold on to that, right? So I can start with a simple constructor to docket, new docket, and then I pass in a documentation type dot swagger underscore two. So this is basically creating a new docket instance that is configured to use Swagger 2. So this is a bare bones docket instance, and now you want to set your configuration on top of this instance. Now, how do you set your configuration on docket? This docket instance is actually manipulated by following a builder pattern. So here's the way it works. When you get a docket instance, you're going to call a select method on it, all right? The first step is to call the select method on the docket instance to get a docket builder object. This is a builder object of a class called API Selector Builder. Now this builder has methods that let you customize how you want Swagger to behave. You can call methods on this object to set everything you need, and at the end, when you're happy, you call the build method on this object to get the prepared docket object, all right? So this is a typical builder pattern in action, right? You can either return the docket as is, or if you wanna configure it, you call the select method on it to get the builder object, put all the properties that you want, and then when you're done, call the dot build to get the prepared docket object. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in the code now. So I'm going to get, I'm gonna do a dot select to get that builder object. 
And then there are a couple of things that I'm going to configure here. I'm going to configure the paths and then I'm going to select the API slash star paths. So these are the URL paths where APIs are exposed, which means that the slash error path is not going to get included because I've said, okay, look at APIs that start with slash API and then slash star. I'm using the and pattern here. This is what the path selectors dot and is using. There's another configuration that I can use, which is package based configuration. So here what I'm doing is I'm using the APIs configuration and I'm specifying what are the packages that it needs to look at. So here the base package is io.javabrains and I'm saying only look at io.javabrains for the base package, don't look at anything else. This is another way in which we are excluding all of the spring related configuration and saying don't look at all those, just look at this base package. So this also excludes the models. We looked at a bunch of models that were included saying, hey, look at just this base package means it's not gonna look at all those other classes. So we are doing two restrictions here. One is restricting based on the URL of the API. Second, we're restricting based on the package name. So with these two, we are kind of excluding some of that Spring MVC stuff. And then I'm gonna do a dot build. And this is what this method is gonna return. Now, now that I'm returning this docket instance, Spring is going to hold on to this and this is what is going to inform Swagger about how it needs to behave. Now I'm going to restart my application and this time when we open the API documentation, we should ideally see just our stuff. As you can see here, the error in point is gone and then the other models are gone. We just have contact information. All right, so with this we've solved the first problem of making sure the documentation is just documenting the API that you want to expose, right? You, with this method, you can get control over what Swagger is looking at. Let's move on to the second problem, adding some application metadata. We want to fix that first top section, which is API documentation and some generic information. We want to add application related information, which is specific to your application. So that's the next step we're going to do, adding application metadata. Adding this metadata is pretty much at the same place where we did the docket, right? So when you create a docket, you can also add API information to it. And this is how you do it. When you do a build, just actually before you return that build instance, you can call the API info method on the docket object directly, all right? So you don't need a builder for this. For specifying the paths and the APIs, you had to do a select, set the configuration, and then do a dot build. For setting the API info, you don't need to do a select. You can set the API info directly on the docket. So what I'm gonna do is after I do a build, before I return that instance, I'm going to do a dot API info. And then this is going to take in as an argument an API info instance, all right? So there's a bunch of stuff that you wanna set in that API info instance. I just need to call the constructor and set those properties. But since there's a lot, what I'm gonna do is create a new method for it and then pass that in over here. I'm gonna go over here, create a new method. I've just copy pasted this because there's a lot of verbose code. So here I have created a new API info object. I'm calling, calling the constructor and that's constructor is taking a bunch of arguments. You can probably get a sense for what these arguments are looking at the values that I've passed. You notice this contact object that I'm passing over here. I'm passing contact information for API info. So this is different from the contact class that we have locally in our project. So I created a contact class. This is not that, right? So this is a Swagger contact information class. So I am using the package reference to get to that thing and not my class, all right? So basically what this is doing is contact of uh, name, URL, and email. So there's a lot of information over here. You can look up the uh, API info documentation page to kind of get more information on what, what are the things you need to pass and what are the things you can pass over here. But basically what you need to do is create this object instance with all the API information. And then all you need to do is, so I'm just gonna stick this over here, call the method from the API info. And then uh, what you're returning with docket is with the API info. So I'm gonna restart this and uh, we should see the result change. 
and it does. Now Swagger is using all of the API metadata that we have passed in. All right, now with this, we have a little more customization for our Swagger documentation. But there is more you can do. You notice all the APIs that we have provided. We have a bunch of information that Swagger infers from your APIs. So for example, the first API is get contacts. It's looking up the name of the method and putting that in the documentation there, which is great. Well, what does that API do? It gets contacts, which is perfect. But what if you wanna add more information? What if you wanna have like a note to whoever is using it and say, hey, this is what this API does, or this is what this API should not be used for, right? So some extra information that you wanna document. Well, for that, you can add more details to the APIs by using certain Swagger annotations. Now this is entirely optional, you don't have to do this, but if you wanna provide these kind of notes to the readers of the documentation, this is how you do it. I'm going to start by adding an API operation annotation. So for this get contact uh, API, I have added this annotation called at API operation. So there are a bunch of things that this annotation takes. So the first is the value, which is the text about what this API does. It's kind of like a one line description of what this API does. Right now, it's taking that description from the method name, get contact. But with this annotation in place, it's gonna say this API is find contacts by ID, which is pretty informative. There's also a notes value, which basically adds a little more description. And I also have a response value, which is contact.class, which is basically saying the response of this API is gonna be that particular model, all right? Just one annotation, you can put this on top of each of your APIs and it's gonna give that description to whoever is reading the documentation, all right? So let me restart this and uh, I'll show you how this looks like now. Refresh the page and now you see the get by ID has some more information. It's not just the method name anymore, it is the description that you've added and it also has the notes that you've added. So whoever is looking at this API will know a little bit more about that API itself. There are a bunch more annotations like this. I'm gonna breeze through a couple more. Uh, for example, you have an annotation that you can use for method arguments, which are basically input parameters for your REST APIs. So let's say there's a post request and you wanna annotate more information about what the user needs to send in the post body. And what if there is an argument to a get request? So let's say there is a path param. In this case, let's look at the get contact. You have a path variable, which is the ID. What if you wanna tell people what that ID should be? Well, you can specify a API param annotation, all right? So what this does is it provides that extra notes to the API parameter, in this case, the ID, all right? So this annotation over here gets that value out to the Swagger documentation. Next, let's look at model objects. We've seen contact and we've seen how Swagger kind of infers that this is a model object. It had ID, name, and phone. But what if we wanna add more description? What if we wanna add more description to the contact class itself? Well, there are a couple of annotations that you can use. There is API model and API model property. API model is something that you put on top of the class so that you can specify notes about the class itself. And then API model property is something that you stick on top of each member variable of the class so that you can specify notes about that particular member variable. All right, so if I were to restart and load the page again, now here you see the model has more descriptive notes. So there's a lot of annotations that you can use. Uh, I definitely encourage you to look up Spring Fox Swagger annotations. You can have annotations for response types, errors, a whole lot more. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of annotations that we are adding over here, right? So every step of the way for the class level, for the method level, for the field level, we're adding a whole bunch of annotations. And the more specific you want it to be, the more information you wanna convey, the more annotations you need to add. So this is a common problem that a lot of people have criticized Swagger for. As long as you use it in moderation, things are fine, but the more and more detail you add, the more and more annotations you're gonna to add to your code and then you're gonna get into the annotation hell problem where the annotations have more line numbers than the actual code itself. If you don't like this and you're kinda of reluctant to use Swagger because of this reason, well, there's an alternative for you.
There's a project in the Spring ecosystem called Spring Rest Docs, which is gaining popularity off late. And since this is a part of the Spring ecosystem, it kind of works well with Spring Boot as well. Spring Rest Docs has a pretty interesting concept. It solves the problem of having too many annotations in the main code by saying, hey, why don't we move all this information out of the main code and into test code? Click on this link to watch that next and learn about Spring Rest Docs. I'll see you there.